Hi everyone, I'm Josh with Northern Frogger and if you've been following my last couple videos uh, you'll know that I recently moved into a new place. If you haven't seen my moving video uh, you should go check that out. But yeah I moved into a new place, uh, brought the frog room with me uh, but it has been kind of rearranged quite a bit now. Um, and I do have a couple of frogs that I've never really shown on the channel before. So it's definitely time to do an updated frog room tour uh, to get you guys caught up on what it looks like now. I've got some really great footage of some of the frogs um, and I'm excited to show you guys around. Uh, so let's get started. So we'll do a quick overview as we come in here. This rack of 20 gallon tanks, grow out rack there. Uh, my day geckos are in the corner. That is my computer desk. And then along this wall, we have a bunch of the large exoterras. Um, tadpole rack in the closet, along with some other storage up top. And uh, the thumbnails on this rack here. And then kind of a work table in the middle. That was some of my more commonly used supplies in bins on here for easy access. And I do have a few more tanks um, that didn't quite fit inside the frog room here that are in other parts of the house. Um, so we will be seeing those later too. So I think we'll start on this rack here. And I think we'll start down at the bottom here. Uh, you might remember um, me getting the oil pox a while ago. So the Dendrobates tinctorius oil pox. Uh, there's four of them in this uh, 20 gallon long aquarium. You can see another one here, another one up there now. Um, I did just feed everybody, so hopefully we'll get good views, but if not, I will splice in some other footage I have of all the frogs, so you at least get to see everybody. So up above the oyopox, we have another 20 gallon long aquarium. Um, this one houses four of the Dendrobates erratus alcope. Uh, it doesn't look like any of them are out right now. A little bit of a shyer frog, um, although one of the bolder erratus. And up above them, another 20 gallon long aquarium and this one houses four of the dendrobates erratus micro spot you can see one of the females right here another one back there is glass is a little bit foggy got a few there and might be tough to see but they've got a tadpole in this little pool here too um, and a lot of people ask about what kind of lights I'm using. So I'll go over those as I go around too. Um, this one you might be able to see in the reflection. Uh, these are just like basic daylight spectrum CFL bulbs on this one. Uh, these ones are just basic daylight spectrum LEDs, um, slowly converting everything to LEDs as the fluorescents burn out. But um, LEDs on this one and LEDs on this one. And these are just kind of like your basic household bulbs. As long as they're uh, daylight spectrum, they seem to work pretty well. And then on the very top of this rack, um, it's kind of a new addition that I haven't really talked about on the channel before. Uh, but this is a 36 by 18 by 12 um, with the sliding top terrarium. And you can see I'm sitting back under his log there trying to get out of these, this glare here. But uh, this is a smooth sided toad, the Rebu. Rebo Gutatis, it's an adult male. Um, definitely the biggest amphibian I have. Um, but I will be doing a feature video on him soon as well. Um, up on top of that is just a cricket tub. because uh, I've been buying quite a few at a time because that guy eats a lot. Um, and then over here beside that, we have the uh, grow out rack. So this is where I raise all of my froglets. Um, and there's a couple other things on here as well. Um, so we just have a, a big jug of RO water. One tub of uh, Alcope tadpoles, a bunch of them in there. It's also my uh, tub full of the eggs. Another tub of super blues. I've also got some thumbnails up in that tub and a tub of uh, super worms. And then down here is just all grow outs. It's all young frogs. Uh, we have these top two rows are five gallon aquariums. So there's 10 of those. 
And then these bottom three rows are all 10 gallon aquariums. So there's 12 of those there. Uh, most of these are the a little bit older froglets. These ones are all pretty much ready to sell. There's some Alcope here and some more here. And then a uh, tank full of powder blues over here. This is actually an adult female cobalt. Um, I'm probably gonna sell because um, I actually have a pair of cobalts down here. Um, and they are actually breeding. There's some eggs in there right now. Um, so I need to get them upgraded out of this 10 gallon soon. Um, but I have a tank over here. This empty Exoterra is gonna be their home soon. So um, subscribe if you wanna see that build. Should be coming up fairly soon here. And then down below, uh, we have a couple Leucomalus in this tank, and then a couple of the Guyana yellow Leucomalus in this tank. Um, I have quite a quite a few of these ones. These are the kind of standard or orange banded Lukes. And then uh, yeah, these Guyana yellow ones here. And then a couple that are still just sitting empty. And then for lights on this rack, um, these are all just like these cheap. LED strip lights that I got from Amazon um, and just kind of taped up there. Um, just made sure they got, I got daylight spectrum ones. Um, they work pretty well. Uh, they're not enough light to grow all plants very well, but uh, they work pretty good for these grow outs. So then back in this corner here, uh, we have my gecko tank. These are the giant Madagascar day geckos. Um, there's two in here see one of them here this one is the female I think the other one's male but I uh, haven't really seen any breeding out of them yet and um, this is like a 55 gallon corner aquarium uh, that I converted into a gecko tank And then up on top, uh, we have this fixture which has two of the uh, 22 inch Arcadia UVB lights. And then uh, this dome has a ceramic heat emitter um, on a thermostat that's hooked up down here uh, for a basking spot. And then this one is just another daylight spectrum light. Um, so then over here we have my uh, computer desk computer where I do my video editing and I can also watch shows or whatever while I'm working in here and then over on this side so these stands on this side all three of these I built myself specifically for these tanks so we'll hold four of these um, 18 by 18 by 24 exoterras or zoo meds which are these ones here Um, so there will be, this one's getting built soon. Um, I'm probably going to sell this 20 gallon aquarium. Um, and there's going to be two more of these size terrariums on top. Um, but for now, if we go over here, um, down in here, you can just kind of see, um, I have a pair of the Dendrobates Tinctorious Powder Blue. And in this one, I have a pair of the Dendrobates Tinctorius Citronella. That's the female there. Um, up top, um, in this one, this is a standard 20 gallon aquarium. Um, and there's a 2.1 trio, uh, which is two males, one female of the Dendrobates Leucomalus. And I was hoping to get uh, through this before the misters went off, but didn't quite do it. So I uh, might as well mention now, almost all of my tanks here are hooked up to a Mist King uh, misting system that goes off twice a day uh, for a minute in the morning, right after the lights come on. And then uh, for another, I think that was 45 seconds um, in the afternoon here. Um, so starting down here, 
we have another pair of the Leucomelis. Uh, these are my original pair, um, my oldest frogs in the frog room. I got these guys when they were about 10. And I've had them for about seven years now, so they're about 17. So they're definitely getting up there, but uh, they seem uh, healthy still and they lay eggs. Uh, one of my most consistent layers in the frog room still, so uh, hopefully they've got quite a few years left. So then over to this side, uh, we've got another pair of powder blues. This is the female here. Nice big bold frogs. Oh, and I should mention all three of these terrariums are running on these light hess, uh, 36 inch LED lights, basically like the cheapest ones I could find on Amazon that were kind of daylight spectrum. They're a little bit bluer than I would like. I think these ones are uh, 6,500 or 7,000 Kelvin, uh, which I think about 5,500 is a little more ideal, but. Um, and then up top here, both of these tanks have pairs of the Dendrobates tinctorius azurius. You can see one pair over here. Sorry about all the glare here, but uh, the tanks are starting to fog up after the misting there. Um, and you can see another one down here. Um, and then actually on top of here, I'll show you these guys quick. Um, I just picked these up a few days ago. They got a nice colony of these uh, dairy cow isopods, actually two colonies. So I'm excited to uh, get culture in those. Had a grow out cup here with a uh, little variobolus that almost looked ready to go out into a grow out tank. Got tadpole cups here. Um, and then these are the 18, by 18 by 12 exoterras. Um, this one has the Dendrobates erratus reticulated. And this one uh, has my pair of Dendrobates erratus super blue. And these ones are the same, just kind of a household uh, daylight spectrum LED bulb. And then down here we have the big Vivarium, it's got some dead plants in there, so it wasn't misting it quite enough and it doesn't have a top right now. Um, but this kind of half built, this is the 36 by 36 by 18 Exoterra. So I'm gonna hopefully be finishing this one up uh, pretty soon. And this is just another one of those 36 inch uh, light test LED ones. And then I've also got another one that's not actually not plugged in right now, but it's kind of almost like an outdoor security light. Um, that's another daylight spectrum LED one uh, that lights that up even better. And then, uh, cause I built all these stands custom, they all have storage down the bottom for uh, fly cultures. And then just a little more storage over here, my hand mister, that I actually use quite a bit. Uh, tripod for my camera, I've got some uh, tadpole tubs. I've been keeping all of my erratus in tubs um, and it seems to be working out pretty well right now. Um, and then a lot of other tadpole cups here for all my other frogs, as well as have a few other random ones around. Most of these other ones are uh, thumbnail tadpoles. And then you can see to the side, uh, these are kind of the morphing out cups. So there's a few froglets that are almost ready to come out from there too, into the grow out tanks. And then I just have my extra deli cups and stuff and um, a bunch of springtail cultures up here. Just a little bit of extra storage. And then over on this rack, these are the 12 by 12 by 18 exoterras. These are all my thumbnails. Um, so here, uh, this one is the Ranadomea Fantastica True Nominal. See one kind of in there. Um, these guys have been breeding like crazy. I think there's tadpole in there. There's eggs in those cups. There's also a clutch of eggs on this. Oh, that frog is in that cup. 
and make sure he doesn't jump out. But there's another clutch of eggs on this bromeliad too. Um, so over to this side is uh, the Ranadomea vanzellinii. And then down below, uh, this is the Ranadomea imitator chizuda. Uh, there's a pair in here. Um, and then this one down here are the chizudas as well. Uh, there's a 1.2 trio in here right now. Um, over here we have another Fantastica. This is the Ranadomea Fantastica Monte Cristo. And then finally down here, one of the more recent additions to the frog room. Uh, this is the Ranadomea Wakarii Gold Leg. Really cool looking frogs. A little bit shy, but uh, the male has actually been fairly bold for me, but I rarely see the female. Um, but they've been breeding really good too. There's a couple tadpoles in those cups as well. And this one up here has the uh, just the household LED lights as well. And then these ones have uh, the Night Crew uh, 18 inch, I think, LED aquarium light, bulb, light bars um, and they work pretty good. These ones are a little bit uh, cooler than I would like to. I think these ones are 7,500K. Um, yeah, as I said, I think like 5,500 to 6,000 is probably ideal. So that's gonna do it for all the tanks in the frog room here, uh, but there are a couple more in other parts of the house. Um, so if we head down the hallway here, I uh, can see some uh, future builds uh, waiting right here. So subscribe and hit that notification bell uh, so you don't miss those. Uh, but then down around the corner here, we have a couple more tanks. Uh, this is a 90 gallon aquarium. Um, it's basically just full of bromeliads with a couple other plants back there, but mostly just Brahms in here and some moss. Um, and this houses uh, four of the Uranidomea variabilis southerns. Uh, there's a 1.3 group in here. Um, and they breed like crazy. There's tons of tadpoles and all these bromeliads. Um, really like watching this tank, getting to see a lot of the uh, kind of natural behavior, them transporting and feeding tadpoles in here, which is really cool. And then over to this side here, is my one aquarium that I have left. Uh, kind of combined my other ones. So I have uh, my emerald eye rasboras in here, along with my uh, long fin white cloud mountain minnows, um, and a bunch of random guppies. Um, there's also cherry shrimp in here, uh, three Omano shrimp, and a couple auto sinkless. You can see one of the autos there. Um, there's also a betta in here. And so this is a Fluval 29 gallon tank. Um, came as kind of a complete kit with the heater there. Um, the Fluval C3 filter. I've also got the Eheim auto feeder on the back here. Um, and then I've also got a sponge filter uh, that I added in this back corner um, that actually came from one of the previous tanks to kind of jumpstart uh, the biological filtration in here. Um, then I've also got a sponge on the intake of the filter. And uh, most of the plants in here are just crypts, um, the cryptocorine, uh, just because it's just the stock light that comes with it and uh, not much else will grow in here too well, I don't think. Um, although there is a little bit of jungle val uh, coming in nicely over here. And then down in the bottom of this stand, uh, we have another tank which is another one of the 12 by 12 by 18 exoterras. And this one has my two uh, red-eyed tree frogs, which I think are just hanging out back here. And then moving down here, uh, this is actually my girlfriend's tank, and this is another 36 by 36 by 18 
um, Exoterra. And this is home to her pair of Powder Blue Tinctorius and three Morning Geckos. You can see one of the geckos right here. So this is our big display tank in our kind of living room here. And I think she did a pretty good job setting up her first vivarium. And then last but not least, uh, we have the snakes. Uh, this is uh, the tank, the one tank in my bedroom. Uh, this is the Dumeril's boa. He's hanging out under his hide here. Um, and he needs to get upgraded fairly soon because uh, he's definitely outgrowing this tank. Uh, but this is the same size as the toad tank, the 36 by 18 by 12. He's got his two hides, water dishes. Um, he's got a thermostat as well. And this tank actually has a heat pad underneath and a ceramic heat emitter up in here. So it's getting heat from both sides. And then just some more LED lights uh, to light it up here. And I do keep all of my lights on timers. Uh, so they go for 12 hours a day uh, from the same times every day, um, which is just good for consistent plant growth. And uh, I think it's healthy for the animals to keep a consistent circadian rhythm. Okay, that's pretty much going to wrap things up here. Um, I just wanted to mention one more thing. There's one animal I didn't get to see here, and that's my pinstripe ball python. I do still have him technically, uh, but he's not in my place right now. Um, this new place is quite a bit smaller than my old place. So moving in here, we were having a little bit of trouble uh, finding space for his big enclosure, which is a four foot by two foot by two foot. Um, but my girlfriend is actually good friends with the people that live in the unit next to us in the same building. Um, it's actually how we got the place. Um, but it just so happens that she really likes snakes too. Um, she kind of wanted one, but wasn't sure if she wanted to make the full commitment to owning one of her own. Um, so it actually worked out pretty good and she is just fostering uh, my ball python for me for now. So even though he's actually just on the other side of this wall here, um, I can't actually go see him right now um, due to the COVID restrictions uh, that my province is currently under. Um, but once things open up again, uh, we will be seeing him on the channel again. Um, so that's the story. If anyone was wondering uh, where the ball python was, I do still have him, but uh, he's kind of being fostered next door for now. Um, but yeah, I think now you're basically fully caught up on all of my animals. Um, so I guess I'll just wrap things up here. Thank you all for watching this video and a huge shout out uh, to all my viewers who helped grow the channel over the last year um, by liking and subscribing and sharing my videos. Uh, I've grown quite a bit over the last year and it uh, really means a lot. So thank you. And here's wishing everyone a fun and safe New Year's and all the best in 2021.